Me and Danielle's down here on the Washita River today. Um, we're gonna set out some limb lines and some bank poles, some ditty poles this evening. Put a few live baits on them. See what happens. See if we can come up with some flatheads. We'll have to put it like out here where you can actually. You know, from when we come in. Trying to put these on the outer edge, you know, where we can see them. Alright, now I'm putting this over here so it don't uh, hang on up going through here or nothing. You know. bluegill we're gonna do a little trim on him just a little bit cut a little bit off his top fin too why make, make him a little easier to catch and then i'm gonna hook him like right up there close to the head so he can turn in this there's not a lot of current here but there's a little bit Oh yeah, look at that baby. I'll do my scissors. A little trim. Perfect. little suckers <laughs> I think that's your friends coming back brother
All right, we are here putting these ditty poles in, these bank poles. Uh, we just found a little, well, we got a lot of current in the river right now, but we found a little spot that's got a, like a little breakaway. About a nine or 10 off circle hook on this one. Weight and uh, getting a couple set out here. See what happens. I think we're going to do pretty good. We might catch fish right here. Or a turtle. Or a turtle. Mm -hmm. Danielle says. Good old bluegill there. Look at there. Put him on there. Just come back here. Get away from him. Trying to catch him. I'm going to come right back here because this current slack. I'm not going too far to the front of him. I'm going to go about right there and hook him. And then we're going to clip that tail off a little bit. Clip that top fin off just a little. Might get that bottom one too. There you go. Well, we just checked our first uh, ditty pole or bank pole. And I don't know what did a number on that, but something pretty good size broke at because that's like 185 pound test right there. So we either hung a big one, snapping turtle got us or something. Could have been a big loggerhead. But we're just going to tie an emergency hook on there for tonight. I got some spare hooks. And uh, put us another bait on there and go again. Been nice, had about a 40 pound big flatty right there for another try. See what happens. Get up there and see what we got on that side. Big old blue. Ooh, he buried that circle hook. Look at there. That's why you use circle hooks right there. Right in the corner of the mine. He was done when he hit that. Get him off. Rebate this one and check the rest of them. But that's a good start right there. Probably a 15 to 18 pound blue. Good one. You gotta know I didn't bring no pliers of no kind. That's that frenzy circle hook right there. We used to use them offshore a lot. I had a bunch of them. And uh, we've caught a lot of blues and flatheads on them. I will be ordering some more of them. They just, they hook up better. Perfect. Baby, to go again. Here it is. Look at it moving. Uh, the last time I pulled up one, it was a big old turtle. Go get him. All right, we got Danielle up there going to try to get this one. I don't know what we got yet. He's pulling all over the place. Please don't be a turtle. Go under his head. Oh, it's a big flat head. Don't, don't pull him hard now. Ooh, I got one at my foot. Get under. There you go. 
Nice flathead. Yeah. That's a good eater. Hold him up. Just grab the line and pull him out of the net. Be good now. Look there. Good one. Throw 11 o'clock run. We got him. Got one on there? Yeah, we're picking them up. Not a turtle. Not a turtle. Blue. Good eating size, blue. Yep. Not bad. Not bad. Mm, probably four. Four pounder, maybe. Three point six. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> all right, look like we might have something else on there. Whatever it is, all up in the bushes, the line goes goes up in there. She gonna try to. Yeah, there he is, right there. Get him out of there or not? Grab that limb, pick up on it. Maybe you can get him out from under. He twisted all up. Don't get the hook in you. Huh? See if you can work him out of there first. He's hooked pretty good, it looks like. Let him drop down in there. Don't get that hook in you. The net kind of gets in the way. There you go. You got it. I know. It's I'm going to leave you alone. You know what you're doing. He's laughing at me. Ha ha. He don't wore himself out. <laughs> he don't care. Pretty good one. Yep. Look at that old limb shaking up there. See the tree shaker. So get him. I thought I had the camera on, didn't even have a camera on on that one. And she done caught another one. Yep. Another nice blue. Went back into the river for somebody else to catch or to grow old and die. And let Bradley try this again. He done lost one. Let him do one simple task and he throws a fish back into the river. We put them in the boat. In the boat. Big boy. Alright, coming over in there. He 
a mean one. That big rascal. He don't want all up in the trees. You did good. I taught you well. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show y'all how we set these limb lines up. We got some daylight this morning. We're taking them up. And uh, how we tie them on. You know, these, we got a hook here. We got a swivel. We got our weight there. 12, 14 inches above. But this is what I want to show you. This is why we tie a slip knot. I do this on yo-yos or limb lines. Right there. Just pull that loose and you're done. Instead of putting a loop or something, I'll show y'all how we do that real quick. Just with a little bit of light so y'all can see it. How we tie this slip knot. So, I got my tag line throw it over the limb pull this out here I pull kind of like a four there come over here and back through like that it's just a slip knot that's all it is and then we'll cinch that down a lot of times we'll put if that name tag wasn't there I would pull this loop all the way down against that knot right there and then you just cinch that up right against that limb like that. Kind of work it back and forth a little bit. And that's not coming undone. You can catch a 50, 60 pound fish on that. We done had some lines broke this morning. Um, or a second one broke this morning on our ditty poles. Not sure what's going on with that unless those fish that hit those were just so big that them ditty poles didn't give but so much. And they just smooth broke off, but we had two lines on our ditty poles. We don't know if it was snapping turtle or if it was a big fish and they just broke off. But uh, we did pretty good on our limb lines this morning. Got got a big one. Bradley threw one back. I threw one back, trying to sling him in the boat. I was kind of in a bind up there, but it'll be all right. He'll grow for next year. We just roll these up tape them up, stick, stick them in our little bucket. You can see here our little bucket. Got these, just a lid, and we just cut the center out of it, drilled all these holes in it, and you can just put your hooks right in there. Works good. Girl, I think got one up here. Very cautious about what I pull up. Flathead. Need him? Here, I got you. Come off. No, babe. I don't throw them back in the river. You don't throw them back like I do? Yeah. I throw this one back. Yeah. I said I will. I'm pretty good at throwing them back. Yeah. Nice little flat head right there. About eight pounds. Put her to work up there, taking them limb lines down. We got just a little bit of slack current in the edge of these woods here. And we try to get, you know, where our bait won't die from the current and everything. And just set these limb lines up in here in these woods. Just random spots. And that's where we catch them. i show y'all real quick what we got. Look at there. That's a 70 quart. I can't even put another fish in there. It's full. Look here. We got... Another flat head, big blue up there. Them some good ones. Got an oxygen bottle right there. That oxygen regulator for bait. We had that oxygen bottle uh, rigged up on this 70 quart. That's how we transport our bait with that oxygen. Got the live bait regulator on there and uh, works pretty good. Keeps some baits good and alive till we get them down here and get them on the hook. You don't have to fool with a bilge pump or anything like that. Here's what we caught last night. One big old flathead. Probably go 25. One pretty good blue. I bet he's 20 at least. It's 
some good eaters. I'm gonna take a second show y'all way to dress a blue cat. We uh, show a lot of times how to fillet them, but we're gonna skin this one, and then we'll cut the fillet off so that's a little bit different way, and then we'll dress another one and cut him up in steaks. But uh, on these big blues like this, you can score up here with a knife. Like that, come right under that bone right there. And here's what would make it a lot easier. Take that knife and uh, split that skin. You split it right down the back, like that right there. Once you get it started, it'll go pretty easy. Helps a lot splitting that skin down the back like it. Makes it a lot easier to skin them. A lot of different ways to do this. Um, ain't none of them much faster than an electric fillet knife, but I just thought I'd show you a different way. This is how we used to skin all of them. And uh, big ones like this just ain't easy. You know, you can take that electric fillet knife and work them over pretty quick. With them hanging up, it's a lot easier for me to cut this fillet off. So I always come in here like this, go right beside that backbone, down through there, on both sides, like that. And then you can either lay it on the table, or you can come right in here behind these ribs like that. Take that fillet off of there. Boy, just take that fillet knife, go right down that backbone like that right there. Right, there's our two blue cat fillets a lot of people say these uh, big blues are too big why you keep them and then we get people that say them fish too little why you keeping them so uh, bottom line is all these fish are edible I'll show y'all how to fix them up and make them edible split that fillet like that right there now this top edge of that fillet, that's fat. Cut it off and get rid of it. Right there. Now this side, you can see that lateral line right there. Now what I like to do is lay that fillet like that right there. And I'll just take that knife, put it right in there. Kind of cut that lateral line at an angle. And go on and get that out of the way right there. Now what that left us with... Just a little bit of trimming left to do on the back of this fillet. That's the top part of the fillet there. On these big ones, I like to just get that knife going in there. Kind of, I'll hold my hand above it. Just be careful, don't cut yourself. And just shave that fat and that red meat right off of there. It'll take you a couple times to get it going. Might help to get a sharper knife. I got a little bit sharper one over here I may use. But you can do it just like that right there. Yeah, this is what I grew up eating was these catfish steaks. I'll show y'all how to do that real quick on this one. If I'm doing steaks, let's take this lower fin out. You can see I started at the bottom. And I'm just working that fin out of there. And that pulls all them little bones out with it. Right there. We'll also go in here above that fin. Hit, hit that one. Kind of pinch it, break it down. And pull it out. Get it out of there. Because we wouldn't want that in the state. And you see when I ripped that out, it pulled that fat line out of there too. 
All right, now there's our blue cat. If you want those nuggets, you can take those off. Some people don't keep them. But there's our blue cat right there. And we've already got the fat line taken out of top and bottom. So that's already going to eat better. Now if you notice right here on the side of this blue cat, you see these lines in here. That's the same way the bones are. So I've seen people just stake these fish up like that. You're going to cut them bones if you do that. So we always kind of go in at a slant and then turn and go back. We'll leave this tail section on. That's a lot of people's favorite part right there. Go in there and hit that joint and turn that knife backwards like that. So you can see how I kind of got like a, a V cut there. That keeps from cutting those bones up. There's our catfish steaks right there. That's one staked up blue cat right there for supper. All right, we cook fish a lot in some of the videos. We'll go ahead and cook some more in this one. I'm gonna show y'all how I do these catfish steaks. We got these pretty blue cat steaks right here we just caught this weekend. I'm gonna uh, use some hot sauce, some mustard. We got our cornmeal mix, yellow cornmeal mix. And we just got some Tony's and garlic we're gonna put in that. I'll go ahead, put a little garlic in that pretty much all we put in our fish mix keep it simple Tony's got plenty of salt and all in it so we'll just put it about like that in there no certain amount stir that up a little bit and we don't put mustard we got some catfish fillets we don't put mustard in the fillets but we put it on brim crappie bass anything like that white perch um, but we'll put a little bit on these steaks because you got the sides of these fillets here and that mix won't stick real good to it. We'll put just a little bit of hot sauce in there and all that's going to make that meal stick good. Alright, we're going to go with our fillets first, put them in there. I can see right there, I run this about 325 to keep from browning that fish too much on the outside. Frying these fish in peanut oil. Have people ask what we're cooking it in. And uh, we're using peanut oil. Sorry about the noise in the background. That's the ice cream maker going. So I'll show you all a little bit of that. Uh, we're going to mill up our steaks right there. Dump them in there. Get all that milled up good. Got our fillets taken out. We're gonna drop these steaks in there. Look at them jokers. Turn the fire down just a little bit where we won't cook them too fast. All right, I believe them's about done. They're gonna be a little bit browner because we put the Louisiana hot sauce and mustard on them. They're just right. There they are. Got the steaks right there. Turned out pretty. Got that tail right there. I'm gonna show y'all. That's the best part right there. Got them steaks. Just take them steaks. Look at that meat come off of them. Right there. A little bit of ketchup. That's pretty good stuff right there. We've got our fillets there. They good too. Look at that right there. Homemade orange sherbet. that right there. Might have to include that in one of the upcoming videos. Homemade sherbet recipe. Look at that bowl of goodness right there. Just don't get no better than that. 
tell y'all what, them steaks, that's a whole together different taste. If you hadn't ever eaten catfish steaks, you missed out. I was raised on that, grew up, probably some of the first fish I ate was catfish steaks. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. Y'all be sure to subscribe to the channel if you hadn't already. Like and share the videos and comments. Always appreciated. That's going to be it for this one. God's Country Hunting and Fishing. Keeping it real.